Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today's lesson will be on how to calculate superheat and subcooling and why is it important. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech and to begin our lesson we're going to quickly go over what is superheat and subcooling. If you haven't watched my previous video on what is superheat and subcooling, I'd highly recommend watching that video before continuing on this one. The link to that video will be in this video's description as well as pop up in the top right corner. To keep things simple, superheat is the temperature above its saturation temperature and subcooling is the temperature below its saturation temperature. Let's begin with calculating superheat in real life. We're going to begin by taking our refrigerant gauges and connecting them to our HVAC system. To calculate superheat, we're going to focus on the low side of the system. Once our gauges are connected, we're going to have our pressure readings. Let's say our low side back pressure is 60 PSIG and we are working on a R22 system. Next, we're going to take our PT chart and match 60 PSIG with the corresponding temperature for R22. R22 is represented in the second column here. This is your pressure and this is your temperature. So for 60 PSIG, our saturation temperature is 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we can take our pipe clamp thermometer and take a temperature reading of our suction line. In this example, our suction line temperature is 44 degrees. Superheat is the difference between our saturation temperature and our suction line temperature. The suction line is the pipe leaving your evaporator and entering our compressor. If our superheat is the difference between our suction line temperature and our saturation temperature, 44 degrees Fahrenheit minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So for this example, we have a 10 degrees superheat. As refrigerant leaves our evaporator and travels down to the compressor, there is a temperature increase, and that temperature increase is known as superheat. If so far you are enjoying this content, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe as I do make new videos every week, and stay tuned for the rest of the video. Next, we can begin to calculate subcooling in real life. To calculate subcooling, we're going to focus on the high side of the system. Once our refrigerant gauges are connected, we're going to have our pressure readings. For example, let's say we have a reading of 200 PSIG head pressure for a R22 system. Our next step is to convert that pressure into temperature using a PT chart to find our saturation temperature. The second column is represented as R22. This is our PSIG, and here is our temperature in Fahrenheit. For this example, we're using 200 PSIG. That would be in between 196 and 202, but just to keep things simple, we're going to use 202 and represent it as 200 PSIG. So our condensing temperature is 102 degrees Fahrenheit. So 200 PSIG is our head pressure for the high side and we converted that using our PT chart to find our saturation temperature or our condensing temperature and that is 102 degrees. Next we can take our pipe clamp thermometer and take the temperature reading of our liquid line and our liquid line is the pipe exiting the condenser and entering our metering device. In this example, our liquid line temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. As the refrigerant condenses from a vapor into a liquid and travels down the liquid line, we have a decrease in temperature. Subcooling is the difference between our saturation temperature and our liquid line temperature. 102 degrees minus 90 degrees is 12 degrees. So for this example, our subcooling is 12 degrees. Measuring superheat is important because it can prevent damage to the air conditioner 
or refrigerator and make it run more efficiently. Superheat is critical in HVAC because it ensures the liquid refrigerant is boiled off before it leaves the evaporator and heads to the compressor. A compressor is also known as a vapor pump and if liquid migrates to the compressor, well, you can say goodbye to that compressor and you could always give us a call to replace it. <laughs> In the refrigeration cycle, subcooling is an important process that ensures liquid refrigerant enters the expansion device. Subcooling is important so that when the cycling refrigerant reaches the expansion device, it is totally in liquid form, thus allowing the valve to work properly. Having a balanced superheat and subcooling will ensure the system is running efficiently, thus providing a longer life to your HVACR system with less potential breakdowns. Measuring superheat and subcooling is another tool you can use for troubleshooting the equipment. Each reading you get is another clue to finding the true problem. Rule of thumb for superheat is 8 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit, and the rule of thumb for subcooling is 12 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. These values might vary from one manufacturer to another depending on the type of equipment you are working on. The engineer who designed this system has predetermined these values. Here's a little something for everyone to sum things up. So your superheat is going to be the difference between your saturation temperature and your suction line temperature. And for subcooling, your subcooling is going to be the difference between your saturation temperature and your liquid line temperature. There are many tools in the market to make these calculations for you that save a lot of time and effort to make your day easier. In this video description, there will be a list of tools with links to purchase them that will calculate these values for you, as well as tools that I recommend. If anybody found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.